Today I wanted to go through one opening, uh, the Sicilian Schwenigen variation, uh, followed by um, uh, five games that people have sent in, um, and I think we can just get started. Um, the, the Sicilian Schwenigen variation uh, is, um, you know, normally done off of a, a specific move order, which involves uh, Black setting up uh, e6, d6, and the knight on f6. Um, the knight to c6 is not played. Uh, so here, e4, c5. Knight f3, uh, d6, pawn, ta uh, pawn d4, pawn takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, and then knight c3, um, and then uh, and then um, uh, e6. Uh, so basically here, uh, this is the Sicilian uh, Schwenigen variation. Um, it's char characterized by these pawns on both d6 and e6. Um, it's uh, you know pretty strong, solid. Um, you know, black is plant making kind of a less aggressive play for space in the center and more just trying to have solid control over the deep, the, the fifth rank. Um, but overall here, uh, you know, black is in, in fairly good, uh, you know, black is in fairly good position, um, but, uh, but white still has the initiative. Um, it's a solid, uh, you know, very heavily analyzed, um, opening for, uh, both white and black. Um, and, uh, you know, many of White's plans involve setting up a kingside attack, um, while Black, uh, makes, uh, attacking threats along the C-file, uh, often with the rook. Um, the knight sometimes plays to C6 and exchanges on the C-file, uh, on C6. If that's played, then, um, uh, the, the pawn takes on C6 eventually, uh, either before or after the bishop takes, uh, depending on how much of the pieces are neutralized. Um, but, uh, but then the rook gets set up on, uh, on B8. Um, and has an open line on the b2 pawn. Um, so overall, uh, you know, it's a solid opening, very playable, um, and, uh, and I just wanted to uh, take a look at some of the main lines. Um, there are a total of six different possible main lines. The lines that I know the best are bishop b2, g4, and bishop to e3, um, prob with probably bishop e3 being the one that I'm the most familiar with. Uh, but they're all basically pretty strong and, uh, and will offer white good chances um, and go with the standard, uh, you know, the standard kingside attack. Um, uh, you know, I, I guess I would say let's go with g4 because that specific um, opening theory uh, has uh, the most unique characteristics. Um, this is a really early, uh, you know, attack on the pawn structure for, uh, for um, white. Uh, white is basically building a kingside attack b uh, both before the king has castled and before the bishop even plays to c7 or e7. Um, but the thing about it is basically that the um, you know the rook's not going to get moved to uh, you know it, basically the king's not going to get moved to c8. Uh, the king's almost entirely committed to uh, to castling on the um, uh, the king side here. Uh, so uh, so here g4 uh, offers some opportunities uh, for white to uh, you know basically begin an attack. Um, and exert pressure even before uh, the Black King castles kingside. Um, with that said, you know this makes uh, you know this this which is the main line out of the G4 uh, variation um, uh, leads to a position that looks fairly uncomfortable for Black uh, post castling. Um, you know I don't know if this is enough to scare Black out of castling entirely, but it looks a lot more appealing with the pawns on G4 or a lot less appealing with the uh, pawns on G4 and H4. Hey, S Park, thank you very much uh, for joining the stream. Um, I think we went over your game this morning, uh, S. Park. Uh, I hope uh, I hope that was helpful or that you got to see it. Um, yeah, no problem at all, uh, S. Park. Uh, thank you very much for for joining the stream and uh, thank you uh, for participating and, and contributing uh, material for it. Um, it's really helpful and I, I really appreciate you being here. Um, so yeah, uh, gotcha. Yeah, that's no problem at all. No, no, no. and actually uh, that's a good point. Um, uh, always, you know, look, my goal here is really just to make, uh, lessons free and available to everyone. Uh, so I'm, like, not offended at all if you guys want to, if the schedule doesn't work, uh, you know, don't, don't, uh, feel overly pressured to, to come and watch live. Like, feel free to watch video on demand. Um, you know, the, the thing that's a little bit better if you guys come to, uh, uh, you know, the stream live is you can tell me what your thoughts are and we can kind of go over the game together. Um, but, uh, but I'm not offended at all if the schedule doesn't work super well for you or, or there's nothing, or, you know, basically, um, uh, it's not good for you on a particular day. Uh, we'll still go over your games and the video on demand will be available for at least 14 days and hopefully will be available forever, uh, once I figure out how to do that correctly. Um, I was thinking, I'm, I'm actually in the process this week of, uh, of making it so that all the, um, lessons get transferred onto, uh, uh, YouTube automatically. Um, and then uh, once they're on YouTube, uh, my hope is that they will never get deleted. 
um, it'll just uh, it'll just be on YouTube uh, forever and uh, always be accessible. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for sending the games, uh, S-Park, and uh, thank you very much for being here. Um, so yeah, uh, so G4 and H4 are big moves for white, uh, basically putting pressure on the king side before the king is even castled. Um, this makes castling seem less appealing to me as the black player, but it still, uh, it you know, black still castles king side in a good percentage of these games. Um, knight to c6, rook to g1, h5, uh, either g takes or g5. I, I guess I would sort of be tempted to play g5, but g takes uh, seems to be um, seems to be the main line. Uh, you know, now this is just it's really difficult to, for black to castle kingside, and it's also difficult for black to castle queenside because the c file is open. Um, so overall, this is tricky. Uh, I'll play the main line a few moves later just to see uh, basic ideas in terms of getting the um, uh, you know getting the attack going and, and whether or not black even bothers to castle. Uh, at this point, black. I think is better off castling queenside, uh, just because, um, you know, uh, if, uh, you know, rook gets played to g1, that's really, uh, you know, bad for king safety on the king side. Um, but now I think actually uh, this um, opening has basically prevented black from castling at all. Um, I I wouldn't castle here as black, so yeah, black, uh, black doesn't castle in this particular line. Um, so that's interesting. I mean, basically, G4 is played with the idea of, um, uh, you know, it, G4 is played with the idea of preventing or basically causing Black to, uh, uh, you know, be under a lot of pressure if castle in Kingside. But it's committed so early that basically, um, you know, Black can not castle Kingside entirely. Uh, whether that's awkward, um, uh, you know, whether or not that's awkward to just not do it, uh, that's a good question. You know, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, yeah, S. Park. Um, someone sent me a bunch of openings. Uh, they sent me their full repertoire uh, of uh, of games and uh, or of openings that they're playing. Uh, and uh, I was just like, yeah, let's do. Uh, let's start off with a. Uh, you know, let's start off with an opening for the for, for uh, you know a couple days, a couple days worth of uh, uh, lessons. Um, and uh, and at least uh, you know we'll cover that material. Um, but you know, d you guys don't have to send games or anything like that. If you guys want to look at an opening or end game position. Um, it's super helpful for me actually because I often don't know these openings as well as I should. Uh, so I get to um, I get to go back and learn them. But if anyone ever prefers just uh, you know a, a general lesson or a general topic uh, instead of the um, uh, if if anyone prefers a general you know basically a general lesson instead of a um, uh, instead of like a, a game review, um, just you know, you can make that suggestion on the Discord. And you know, if you're if you're saying you know I'm interested in looking at this particular line of the Sicilian Dragon or, or this particular Scandinavian line, uh, you can just write that on the Discord in place of a, in place of a game that you send, and uh, we'll look at it. I'll, I'll just give it the slot exactly the same way that I would give a game, and uh, and we'll make it part of the lesson. Um, so yeah, so until at least uh, Thursday, I think. Um, we're uh, we're starting off uh, we're starting off uh, all the lessons with a 15 minute um, uh, stream. Yeah, totally. Uh, we've done Kings Indian a bit. Uh, we looked at a Nakamura game out of the Kings Indian, um, but I'll add another Kings Indian slot uh, for uh, for um, May 7th at 10 a.m. Uh, I'll do like a Kings Indian um, recap uh, on that. I'll probably have like a game. Uh, uh, you know, I'll have a, a highlighted game maybe. Um, but we, we actually did do a King's Indian stream, um, probably within the last 14 days. Um, but yeah, that's perfect. Uh, I'll just give you a slot for an opening the same way that I would give a slot to a game review, um, and, uh, and we'll do it, for sure. Um, so yeah, so someone suggested a bunch of openings, uh, and so I have, uh, I have six slots uh, over three days, I think, uh, devoted to that concept. Um, so yeah, anyways, thank you all for, uh, for sending uh, material and sending suggestions and games. Um, okay, so we're on this G4 line. Uh, the other lines here, the one that I'm the most familiar with is bishop to e3. Bishop to e3, a6, f3. Uh, this structure is basically pretty solid for white. Um, white will end up trying to make a kingside attack here. Uh, moves like uh, queen d2, either bishop to d3 or bishop to e2, uh, I think are the main moves for the bishop. Um, and then castling queenside and then pushing the pawns on the kingside, uh, g4, h4. Uh, but a much less... Um, you know, basically a much more conservative, uh, you know, uh, play on, um, uh, you know, the king side. Basically, with g4, which is the second most popular um, variation here, uh, you're signaling immediately this king side attack. Uh, this seems risky, and, and signaling your attentions this early as white, I think, is a little bit, um, uh, you know, could potentially be problematic. 
uh, you know, in, in the game that we uh, went over briefly, you know, it keeps black from castling at all, which is probably bad, but not really what you're trying to do here. You want to play, uh, you want to play a post-castling, um, uh, you know, you want to play a post-castling kingside attack. Hey, thank you very much uh, for the follow, Sprintless. Thank you for joining us. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so G4, um, uh, you know, basically is a very early signaling of, uh, of a big attack by white on the black king side. Um, it would, uh, you know, it would deter me or make me think twice about castling king side, to be honest. Uh, very early start on this. Um, so, yeah, uh, I guess bishop to e3 is what I know, so that's what we'll take a look at. Um, lines are a6, knight c6, bishop e7. Um, but both sides basically develop in a straightforward way. Uh, you know, there's a lot of transpositional potential here. Um, uh, in this case, it looks like white's castling kingside. Um, this is, you know, something that white can do uh, in the Sicilian, but it means that, uh, that the attack on um, black's kingside will be a little bit less pressured uh, post-castling um, and more compromising to, uh, to white's kingside safety. Castles here, f4, a6, a4, queen c7, uh, king h1. And moves like rook g, rook f3, rook g3, rook h3, probably rook g3, um, you know, become available to white in the near future. Uh, you know, white also may go with the g4 structure, but, you know, it, it gets really dangerous uh, with the king having castled kingside. Uh, you know, the attacking um, pawn storms on black uh, tend to be pretty compromising to white's king safety. Uh, so that's something to just think about when launching these attacks. Uh, you know, unlike in king, uh, uh, basically, unlike in the Sicilians where um, white castles queenside, uh, if white if white castles king side, uh, white needs to be a lot more cautious in in the attacking on the king side. King attacking on the king side is still probably the correct plan for white, um, but uh, but there, it's much more double edged when you're uh, you know basically compromising your own king safety to do it. Still probably the the mainline plan though. Rook e8, bishop f3, rook b8, g4. Uh, so yep, uh, you know as as I said, the the main line here is to just start launching an attack on the king side. Uh, it's dangerous though. I mean, you've now opened this white, uh, you know, you've opened this white diagonal on your king. So uh, you know, better better make sure that uh, that you uh, you know protect uh, accurately and uh, and hope that your attack on the black king side is uh, is successful. Um, knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, e5, fx, dx, bishop a7. Rook a8, and basically here, uh, you know, white is in pretty good place. Uh, rook d8, queen e2, knight e8, and uh, and here I think, uh, you know, I would just I would just keep playing normally as white. Uh, you know, continue the attack, maybe bishop to h5, uh, onto bishop to f7. Um, but overall here, I think it's pretty solid. Uh, bishop to e3, bishop to e6, bishop to g4, and uh, and basically here, um, you know, queen f2. This this sacks a full exchange. Uh, in a main line. Uh, I guess it's a trade because this bishop takes f1, this bishop, uh, you know, basically uh, white can play bishop to g3, but anyways, we, we're, we've gone way down a, a particular line here. Um, but I don't think that in the Shevenigan Sicilian, the, uh, the bishop e2 and the bishop e3 lines are really too differentiated. Uh, they're basically the same concept. So, so I would say in terms of uh, the Sicilian Shevenigan, um, there's three main variations here. Bishop e2, g4, bishop to e3. And I don't think, th I, you know, I think bishop e2 and bishop to e3 uh, sort of transpose into each other uh, pretty frequently. They're sort of, um, you know, uh, general uh, developing ideas. Um, the attack's going to be launched on the king side, but g4 diverges from the other two by launching it so early. Uh, let's look at bishop e2. Bishop e2, a6, castles, bishop e7, f4, uh, queen c7, bishop e3. And now White's, uh, I think White's, you know, pretty much better here. Uh, this is a little bit loose. It's going to be a little bit more cautious in terms of a kingside attack. But, um, you know, I, I think basically White has a, a center advantage. Uh, so, you know, when they talk about the small center of the Schwenigen, this is it with uh, the d6 and e6. Um, you know, there's a dispute over the, the fifth rank, but White controls the fourth rank and, uh, and has a space advantage. A uh, good opportunity to, uh, to move out his pieces. Bishop e3, bishop f3. And, uh, and white's overall looking pretty good. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing particularly surprising here. Um, yeah, uh, looks good for white. Uh, you know, basically a, a straightforward position where white has a spatial advantage. Uh, and in the Sicilian, uh, you know, g4 will eventually get played. Uh, we can just keep going through a few moves, but, uh, but g4 is coming for sure. Uh, here you go. 
Um, but yeah, this uh, this basically is uh, is White's plan. White has a pre-made plan to attack on the king side. He does it in most of the openings. Um, G4 signaling this super early sometimes deters Black from castling king side at all. Um, but uh, but overall, uh, you know, if White can uh, create an early attack, uh, he's in pretty good shape. Um, Black will respond by trying to start play along the um, the queen side here. Uh, but um, but overall, uh, it's you know it, it's these these plans are pre-made. Uh, you know they're pretty well established and consistent throughout most of Schwenigen theory. Um, awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for for uh, for the suggestion and uh, onto uh, onto the games for analysis. Uh, I hope that uh, helps and and uh, you know we're just really scratching the surface uh, on things that uh, that many grandmaster books have been written about. Um, but, uh, but this uh, gives an overview of the main general lines, uh, g4, bishop e2, and bishop e3 uh, on, the sixth, on white's sixth move. Uh, and the defining characteristic, this, uh, this e6, d6 structure. Uh, cool. Um, awesome. Uh, so the next one is uh, from, um, from Leave uh, uh, Saez. Um, I will pull that up right now. Uh, Leave Saez is playing white, and uh, and we will take a look at this. Um, so this is the Indian. This is a uh, an Indian game. Um, Leave is playing white, so we'll take it from his perspective. Uh, but it is going to be uh, you know a standard Indian position with uh, with d6, g6, and knight f6. Um, this is an aggressive way for white to play or for black to play this. Uh, this is a really early push of e5. Um, here, I think, you know, e5 basically potentially trades off the queen on d8 and disrupts the, the king um, position. Uh, I haven't seen much of this, actually. Uh, so let's just look at the opening book. Knight f3. Knight c6 is already a little weird. Um, usually it's uh, g6, and then this is like the, the Indian game position, um, or modern, or Indian, or whatever. Uh, but, uh, but here, um, e3, bishop g7, h3, Indian game position. Um, this game instead went knight f3, knight c6, and then white plays, you know, the relatively neutral e3, and then uh, and then black plays something completely out of the opening book, uh, e5. Um, I think e5 trades off the queen on d8, if I'm not mistaken. So pawn takes, pawn takes, and then uh, queen takes d8, and uh, and black is already in in you know basically under some pressure. Uh, so knight takes here and whites up a pawn and a half. Um, so yeah. Uh, you know this this line uh, you know it, uh, simplifies in the center, uh, but it it leads to uh, it leads to some pretty quick problems. Um, black is already down a pawn, and uh, and white has a better center for sure. Um, so you know you've gotten a situation in which um, uh, black has basically not uh, played a successful uh, opening. I think um, here bishop takes knight takes knight takes. Uh, you know um, black's going to try to generate counterplay. White's king safety here is a little sketchy, um, but I don't really think black has enough pieces left to exploit it. Uh, rook to b8 and pressure on bishop uh, Bishop to b3. Uh, bishop takes b3 and then rook takes b3 looks pretty good for for black, but um, but I don't think you can really establish a, a you know a long sighted attack with uh, with only four pieces left, uh, two rooks and two minor pieces. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, um, all right, interesting. And then, uh, and then it looks like uh, uh, Black hangs his piece, so that's that's definitely a problem. Um, but we have one position where it gets close to equality. Uh, here, um, this knight can go to e4. Uh, so let's evaluate this position: um, knight e4, rook to d1, and then knight takes f2. And these rooks are getting forked, and uh, and basically, um, you know, Black is in a, a kind of a tricky situation. Um, or white is in a tricky situation, about to lose material. Uh, you know, uh, black is still like two pawns up and uh, and has the ability to advance along this king side uh, or a queen side. But I think it's basically worse uh, with um, you know down an exchange. Uh, I don't know how the exchange compares to uh, to the two pawn advantage. Um, maybe you know white can advance with king with uh, c3, king c2, um, and then uh, you know rook to d3 and then b4. Um, th there are definitely some advancing attempts for white, but um, uh, it's a lot less easier and well-established to plan uh, after the exchange is lost. Uh, so bishop takes c4, rook takes c4, 
and then um, say you know rook h1 knight takes or rook f1 and then uh, rook takes d1 um, and here you know it's really very close to equality uh, the rook can't take c2 because of the knight and uh, and basically um, uh, you know white's going to be pushing these pawns on the queen side uh, hoping to win back either an exchange or um, or queen a pawn uh, but uh, you know basically um, dis it disappears uh, uh, white's advantage um, so uh, this you know this basically is tactically complicated uh, c5 bishop takes knight t bishop takes knight takes rook c7 knight b3 and uh, and white's you know white's looking fine um, there's no real there's no real issues until uh, until this move um, and rook d1, uh, you know, basically the, this this knight uh, this knight e4 only wins um, the exchange with uh, uh, you know with the tempo. I mean, you need you know so here uh, rook d1 or you know rook a3 is the most clearly better, uh, but rook d1 also doesn't pose nearly the same problems. It's really only this rook to d2 move which allows this knight to advance to d4 and then forces the rook to d1 um, that is uh, that is the problem. Uh, rook to d1, knight takes f2. Um, I think this should be a move that, you know, you can sort of um, uh, eliminate uh, from, um, you know, from your list based on the mobility uh, that it provides the, um, the rook. Uh, so here, you know, uh, if you move the rook to d2, it's only got, uh, you know, three spaces it can go to, one of which is covered by the bishop. Um, this is not a very mobile rook. Uh, you know, maybe potentially there was the idea of providing some defense to c2, but I don't really think it's that. That's a great an idea. Um, I think here, rook a3. Uh, with the rook a3, you basically control a whole file uh, and maintain the, the third rank. Um, so I think this is better. Uh, this knight is threatening c2, or this knight is defending c2 against threats, um, and uh, and this is, rook is much healthier here than it is on rook to d2. Um, if this was played, the exchange would definitely not be lost here. Um, so yeah, rook d2 causes a problem. Um, black instead uh, hangs the bishop, and I think the game sort of resolves. Um, but in any case, um, I, uh, you know, basically, yeah, so, so this turns out to be a win for white. Um, but I'd like to just point out this one um, fundamental improvement for white in this middle game strategy. Uh, when assessing where the rook should be placed, um, you know, make sure it's in a place that maximizes mobility. Uh, rooks can, you know, basically rooks are valuable. And, uh, and in specific cases where they get, um, you know, limited mobility, they can get um, basically trapped by a knight or a bishop, uh, or, you know, basically like in this case. Um, so here, uh, the limit of the mobility on, uh, on the rook on d2, um, you know, should have basically, or, you know, was likely to cost uh, white in exchange. Um, so here, right, instead of bishop to a6, which hangs the bishop, uh, the knight can play to um, to d uh, or to uh, to e4 and uh, and threaten the rook. Uh, this is an improvement for uh, the improvement for white that I offer is one that uh, limits um, the rook's mobility less, uh, limits the you know basically gives it this open um, rank instead of this uh, this c2 defense. Um, but the c2 defense is fine because the knight is covering it. Um, this uh, this overall just improves the rook. Basically, rook a3 improves the rook. Rook d2 worsens the rook, uh, just based on the mo amount of mobility that's provided on the next move. Um, after this, I think the game is basically over. Um, I guess we can spend a little bit more time on the opening, uh, but uh, but black has played a relatively um, unorthodox opening, so um, you know there's there's not really much opening theory to draw here. Uh, the the really uh, you know basically the the really important um, part of this position. Uh, was right on this game, or basically right at this moment, um, and uh, and you know it offers something that um, I think should be a, a good positional lesson. Uh, bishop plays to c4, rook plays to a3, and the rook uh, controls the uh, the a file uh, very cleanly. Um, it also you know could potentially come back on this file if needed, but probably not. Uh, that's there's no real reason for it to go back. Um, but this uh, this rook controls a bunch of squares. Um, this rook controls basically no squares, and then the knight can get in and uh, and fork it on uh, f2, um, since uh, since um, uh, you know basically rook e2 isn't playable. Um, it's really a question of mobility. Uh, that's the uh, that's the issue. Um, so after that happens, uh, you know basically black is in a pretty good or white is in a, a pretty good place uh, with uh, with um, knight to e4 getting missed. Um, but that's the real key part of this position. It's a positional lesson. Um, otherwise, I think uh, White played reasonably well against a pretty unsound opening. 
um, but I just want to use this uh, this opportunity to reinforce. Um, you know, if you don't have to, don't get your bishop or don't get your rook trapped, because uh, the rook can get trapped by minor pieces, and if it's lost to a minor piece, that's a lost exchange for you. Um, rook a3 is much better, uh, offers a positional improvement, and uh, uh, you know should put you in a pretty good position to win this game. Um, black played something unsound anyways, uh, so there's not really that much there. But, um, uh, you know, basically uh, that, that, that was the key position in this game, and that was the key place that offered you improvement. Um, I just want to look at one other way that, you know, basically I think white exploited this fairly well, but I just want to play through one of the comp lines here. Uh, D takes E5, D takes E5, and then queen takes D8, and then uh, on king takes D8, knight takes E5, and then uh, on knight takes D8, bishop takes E5. Uh, the bishop taking e5 in this case is better because of the threat on c7, um, which black will have to resolve. Uh, overall, it's a good position. Um, uh, so, so basically, on knight c6, on king takes, knight takes e5, threatening f7. Uh, on knight takes, bishop takes, threatening c7. Um, but overall, uh, you know, after this point, white has a great position. Um, the only time when it got close to equal was uh, was right at that moment where the rook's mobility got limited unnecessarily. Um, but black didn't play uh, the tactically correct line there anyway. So um, overall, a solid win for white. Uh, and uh, and the one thing that I would advise just has to do with, uh, you know, in a time when you're moving the rook, uh, make sure that you're on top of its mobility. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, no, no, of course. Thank you, guys. Uh, sorry for, um, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, just, uh, I got stuck in that, so let me look at, uh, your comments real quick, uh, Sprintless. Um, yeah, absolutely. Please, uh, please send, uh, uh, please send the game, uh, Sprintless, and we will, uh, we will get to it. Um, I think if I confirmed that I already asked it, or let me, let me just make sure, uh, I'll take a look at the Discord for a second. Um, Okay, cool. Thank you very much for sending the game, Sprintless. Um, the game is in for um, May 7th uh, at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, thank you very much for sending it. Uh, and uh, perfect. Yeah, it's in for 10 a.m. Eastern Time on, uh, on the 7th, which is, uh, which is Friday. Um, it's great to have this much material ahead of time. I get to prepare better for it. Um, and uh, yeah, please keep sending it. Uh, thank you very much for sending it. And uh, yeah, look forward to the analysis. Um, uh, also, if the time doesn't work well for you, uh, Sprintless, um, you can always watch it video on demand. Uh, or, you know, I'm usually tr trying to be pretty cool about um, moving it to a night session versus a day session. Or if you have a specific time that it might be better for you, I'll, I'll try to take that into account. It's not too hard for me to, to switch things around. I can definitely do it. Um, so, uh, so yeah. But uh, but for right now, uh, Sprintless, it's, uh, it's um, due for uh, 10 a.m. on uh, May 7th. Uh, thank you very much for sending it, and uh, and thank you for contributing to the stream. Thanks for being here. Um, and yeah, thanks a lot, Rockets fan. Uh, look forward to looking at your game soon too. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, it's I really appreciate all you know everyone submitting like t like a lot of content, um, which makes it really easy to uh, to um, you know prepare and set up things. Uh, uh, not at the moment. Um, so I'm gonna work this week and try to get it so that Twitch is integrated with YouTube. Um, you can do that. Uh, I don't know how to do it, um, and I have a feeling that if I put a couple hours aside, I could figure out how to do it. Um, but at this point, uh, the games are just uh, uploaded to uh, Twitch, so they're on the Twitch page under Recent Broadcasts, and they're up there for 14 days. So, um, so yeah, feel free to access those on Twitch, and uh, and I think they should be uh, they should be good there. Um, uh, but YouTube, I'm, I'm going to try to get going. I, I've, I've started my YouTube account. I've started like the YouTube channel. I just need to figure out the integration process with uh, with Twitch and Twitch Studio. Um, uh, then we'll be then we'll be really good. Uh, I, I really want everything to be available forever. So instead of just 14 days, so um, uh, that's why uh, that's why I think YouTube will be a good step forward there. Um, cool. Uh, next game. Um, this game uh, is sent to us by. Um, uh, so, so uh, this game basically, uh, you know, is a solid game for white. Uh, let's just play through it real quick. Um, it's uh, the Albin Counter Gambit, um, which is cool. We actually haven't had one in the Albin yet. Um, uh, no problem. Um, how about a uh, how about um, uh, six oh five p.m. on the seventh, uh, Sprintless? We can do that instead. Um, whatever, you know, honestly, whatever works. Uh, would six oh five on the seventh work for you? Uh, whatever's the most convenient. Um, but yeah, so uh, so here e5, knight c3, bishop b6, pawn takes d5, or pawn takes e5, and uh, yeah, we're looking at the Albin counter gambit. Um, I really don't know this super well, um, but we will get uh, we will get to take a look at it. Um, 
Okay, I'll put it down for uh, for the seventh on uh, at six o five p.m. Um, thank you very much for uh, for sending over the game, Esprinless. Um, cool. Uh, so here, uh, there's uh, D takes E five, Knight C three, and C takes D five. All playable moves. Um, in terms of responses uh, in the opening book, D takes E five is by far the most popular. Uh, you know, basically here, D takes E five is about ninety percent uh, option. E three is also played. Uh, C takes D5 is also played, um, but D takes C5 I think uh, is you know uh, opening theory's uh, dictation of what the best move should be. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, so um, yeah, no, no, thank you for being here, Sprintless. Thank you very much for joining the stream, and uh, feel free to send over any material that you'd like uh, you'd like uh, looked at in terms of these games. Um, so yeah, so D4 uh, is about a 99% move. Um, cool. Uh, here. Yeah, 99% uh, d4. Um, knight f3, knight c6, g3, knight ge7. And uh, and this is basically a main line here. Uh, bishop g2 looks like a 90% option as well. Um, but this plays into a much more kind of reserved, uh, relatively equal uh, Alvin counter gambit. Um, white's initiative here is only about 0.8. Uh, but, um, you know, white is fine after, uh, you know, basically white is fine after bishop g2 but with many other kind of straightforward developing options being acceptable here. Um, cool. Uh, awesome. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to really cement sort of the uh, the strength of, uh, you know, the, the strength of this opening structure. Uh, so e5 uh, and d takes e5 is the most popular. Um, on this d takes e5, uh, white's showing almost a one point advantage. So I, I'd recommend d takes e5 uh, against the Albin counter gambit. Um, black may play d4, which is somewhat of a restricted position, but um, you know you can get uh, more um, pieces attacking it with knight f3. Uh, d takes e5, d4, knight f3, knight c6, g3. Um, white has a few different options here. Either g3 or a3 or bnd2 are all kind of straightforward. Uh, you know, basically, other than a3, which prevents uh, bishop to b4. Um, these are uh, straightforward developing moves for white. Um, cool. So, uh, let's look at this. Um, knight c3, uh, bishop e6, uh, is an unusual move. Uh, this is not, you know, basically this is a deviation from theory. Um, with c takes d5 here, bishop takes d5 here, d takes e5 here, uh, this e5 pawn is gonna, um, be retained. Uh, and this bishop is getting threatened either, you know, basically directly by the queen and knight so um bishop's probably going to have to move or uh, or c6 will have to be played or potentially knight e7 but um anyways this was a this was a bad deviation from theory for uh, for black on knight c3 the correct move was c6 um transposing this into something a little bit more normal uh still d takes c5 is the most popular response d4 knight e4 queen a5 bishop d2 um queen takes knight g3 um I, you know, I guess this is a, uh, you know, this is basically a position in which uh, the queen is probably overextended. Um, white has good development, and uh, and everything is good here. Um, but, anyways, uh, the game sort of continues with white developing normally and black trying to develop as normally as he can. Actually, black's development probably isn't that bad here. Uh, he can get his bishops out and knights out fairly easily, um, and with uh, and with knight to g3. Um, you know, uh, bishop f5 is no longer available, but the bishop will probably still be able to play to e6. Um, that's probably now the most uh, the most natural square for uh, for the bishop. Um, but overall, weird uh, weird opening. Um, Albin counter gambit. Uh, I want to keep looking at the Albin counter gambit, but I also want to get this game through. So let's take a look at this. Um, you know, let's take a look at the rest of this. Um, the e pawn looks somewhat isolated, but looks difficult for black to attack without a, without a pawn. Um, and white's up a piece, so you know how much. I, basically, this is looking at a, you know this is basically looking like a significantly better position for white. Um, I don't know if it ever gets close here, uh, but um, yeah, losing the rook here I guess makes it close. Uh, so yeah, so great. Um, it's been a while since we've taken a look at an endgame. Uh, this basically looks like, you know, this is getting evaluated as equal, but let's look at kind of the themes for white in this endgame. Um, this should be interesting. 
uh, f4, rook c3, h5, and uh, and here, um, yeah, b6 looks like a blunder that's going to allow rook takes h5. Uh, and overall here, it looks about equal. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sort of wondering, uh, how should uh, white play this? Uh, my guess is probably that it's really drawish. Uh, there's not really much. So, so the position where it first, uh, you know, where it first turns into a rook and pawn versus rook and pawn endgame is here. Um, this is interesting. Uh, so I don't know. Rook a5 looks playable. Uh, b5 and then b6 look playable. Um, but it's hard to know how white should advance this. I mean, the engine's evaluating as a draw, so that's probably the most key part of this. Um, but in any case, uh, you know, b5, b6, and, uh, and white is good, I think. Um, you know, white's going to be able to probably, um, uh, you know, pick off one of these pawns, and, uh, and I think things should be relatively good. Um, anyways, rook a5, king b6, f4, and, uh, and things, you know, basically, uh, the position simplified. Black's pawn structure on the C file, or on the F file is pretty bad. Um, and uh, this was an error for black. Um, you know, the, the winning move here, uh, king takes f4, is, is really an error here. If uh, the rook plays to b5, uh, this basically gets into a winning type position. Uh, rook to c8, b7, rook to b8, king takes uh, f4, and, uh, and I think everything's good. Um, nothing, uh, nothing too surprising there, uh, and uh, yeah, basically a win for white. Um, awesome. Uh, let's keep looking. d4, d5. Pawn takes e5, bishop b4. Uh, this is just um, unusual. Uh, I don't really know anything, you know, basically going on here. Pawn takes d5. And uh, here, I don't know. I mean, I guess I would just say white is better. Uh, you know, white's gained a piece. Um, here, uh, e4 was an error. If knight b takes d5 or d4, uh, then white is still winning but not losing a piece. Um, the, uh, the correct solution here, I guess, yeah, was just, like, bishop to c3. Um, uh, knight c6 is really a blunder. I don't understand why black would play that. Um, knight takes b4, uh, I guess, you know, is, is fine. Uh, you know, white may have this check, queen a4, but then you can play knight to c6, and everything is, uh, everything's good for white. Um, anyways, uh, things continue. Uh, and... White ends up a, up a rook and ends up in a drawn endgame position. Um, pretty wild game, to be honest. Uh, d4, d5, uh, pawn takes e5, pawn takes. And, uh, and I think everything's uh, pretty much all right. Um, threats on uh, d5. And uh, yeah, I mean, basically, uh, you know, black deviated pretty early from an opening. And, uh, you know, not really much uh, after that. Hey, thank you very much, uh, Leaf. Uh, we went over your game uh, already. Um, it was, uh, I think, the first game that we went over. Um, but thank you very much for sending it, and uh, please keep sending games in the future. Um, so yeah, so e5 here. Uh, I think there's better options, like d takes, you know, basically playing the, the opening move as opposed to knight c3 um, offers white better chances. Uh, here I would look at d takes e5, uh, d4, knight f3, knight c6, g3. Um, this is uh, this is how the Albin counter gambit is played. Um, the main the main move, uh, the, you know, the ninety percent move is D takes E five. Um, I would advise uh, White to play D takes E five in the future. The main response to that is D four, which is a move that sort of uh, flattens your position. Um, but then you can just play kind of normal developing moves. Knight F three threatening um, to take D four. Uh, Black defends it, but just basically focus on normal development. Um, I like Bishop F four here, even though it's not really an opening line. Uh, g3 is the recommended opening line, knight ge7, bishop g2, knight g6, castles, and, uh, and basically, you know, this situation is, uh, is good for white. Uh, they're, you know, white's in a pretty good place here. Um, bishop e7, I think, is, uh, the right idea, and, uh, yeah. Cool, yeah, thanks, Sleef. I take, uh, I take online classes as well. Uh, I just, uh, I just finished one myself, um, and, uh, and started another one. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so here basically, um, this is, uh, this is pretty interesting. Um, I don't know, maybe bishop f4 here, uh, you know, if you really want to be materialistic about it, 
but uh, but knight g takes e5, and I still think white has a better, uh, you know, has the initiative here. Knight takes, knight takes, and this bishop on g2 uh, threatening this a8 diagonal is pretty strong. Um, let's keep looking. Uh, d4, d5, c4, e5, uh, pawn takes pawn, d4, knight f3, knight c6, uh, and then either a3, bishop f4, or knight d2. Uh, g3 seemed to work out pretty well. Um, other opportunities, a3, knight g7, b4, knight g6, but basically just a relatively normal game for white. Uh, D takes E5 doesn't seem to um, create any major tactical issues uh, for white. Um, I think basically white is fine, and uh, and everything I think is good. Um, D4, knight F3, knight C6, G3, no issues here. Uh, pretty straightforward advancement for white, and uh, and nothing uh, you know nothing really you know too surprising about this. Um, D4 can be a little bit restrictive, but you know you have both opportunities to clear it off. You have opportunities to undermine it with e3, bishop takes e3. But overall, uh, white's in a good place. Bishop e6, bn d2, queen d7, bishop g2. Uh, and uh, and yeah, white is, uh, I think white's in a pretty solid place. Uh, you know, maybe b3 and then bishop to b2. Uh, yeah. Cool, yeah, thanks, FIFA boy. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, um, yeah, stopping by. Um... So bishop to g2 and uh, and white's in a good place. Uh, castles, castles, h5, h4. Uh, nothing really too dangerous. Basically, just have to play chess. Um, so you know, reinforcing uh, the main point of this opening, since uh, since um, I think this was not the best line for white. An improvement was e5, d takes e5, d4, knight f3, and uh, and white is in a good place. Knight c6, g3, a3, or b n d2. Um, all of those are good options for white. Um, defending straightforwardly and putting threats on d4. Uh, you probably will have to give back the e5 pawn at some point, but even if you give it back, uh, you will basically be in a good uh, a good general position. Um, I'm sort of curious about bishop f4, because that's the line that I would be tempted to play. Um, I think bishop f4 should be fine too. Uh, and it makes more sense from a developmental perspective, since, uh, since it uh, gets the bishop out before the knight. Um, but... Yeah, eventually the e5 pawn uh, still has to be given back, uh, but but white actually has a positional advantage. So overall, uh, white can take the accept the gambit and then give it back with a positional edge as one is supposed to do with the gambit. Um, knight g x e5, knight x e5, knight x e5, and now uh, you know with queen f5, these pawns are getting or these pieces are getting forked. Uh, everything is good. Um, so, anyways, uh, very interesting. Um, I think uh, I think that's the first game that we've looked at out of the Albin Counter Gambit, uh, and on to the next one. Um, this one is from Myriad, uh, Myriad58. Uh, he's um, he's playing black here, uh, and we will look. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I guess I would say um, with Fianchetto setups, uh, you know, it's sort of. Um, uh, you know, it, it basically depends on the rest of the position. Um, you know, in in a um, you know, in a uh, modern type position, uh, that's pretty fine. Um, you know, Fianchetto setup with G three, G six, uh, you know, uh, or depending on who's playing it. So so G six generally, Bishop G seven. Um, that becomes Black's most valuable piece, uh, and paired with a good uh, pawn break at the same time, um, can be a pretty good position for uh, for Black. Um, you know, it, it really depends. Uh, it's a good question, Leaf, um, but nothing, uh, nothing particularly, you know, nothing particularly insightful about my analysis. Uh, it's just basically, um, you know, a way that you can develop the bishop effectively and, uh, and basically, um, uh, you know, it's, it's a good diagonal. You know, Fianchetto is sort of a good way to play it. Um, and uh, depending on the position, it can be the appropriate thing to do. Uh, you know, Fianchetto setups on b3 for white in the Italian situation, or, or b3 bishop to b2, um, tend to not be so strong. Um, so it's a very complicated question, Leaf, and uh, I hope my um, uh, analysis is reasonably uh, good. Um, the main point there is uh, is just, um, uh, you know, don't, um, I, I don't know, uh, don't play anything unnatural trying to achieve a Fianchetto setup. Um, but just, uh, you know, just sort of, 
decide when you know whether it's fitting for the opening and the position that you're playing in. Very broad question. Thank you very much for the leaf for that uh, leaf. Um, cool. Uh, so, anyways, uh, let's keep going. Uh, let's take the position is black. Um, this is Myriad's game. E4, D5, pawn takes D5, queen D5, knight F3. Um, and this is an interesting Scandinavian defense. Uh, basically, this is uh, not the usual Scandinavian fence in that it leaves the um, queen on d5 unchallenged. Uh, you know, it's sort of um, a very, uh, you know, it's it's kind of a lazy way to play this. Uh, it's basically not, um, uh, you know, it doesn't really make sense to be playing knight f3. Uh, you know, you, you do want to um, develop with tempo here. Uh, so, so developing without tempo doesn't really make a whole lot of sense here. Um, bishop g4, bishop e2, knight c6, h3, bishop h5, knight c3, and then queen d7. Uh, you know, basically white's looking good here. Uh, this is relatively good for, uh, this is actually relatively good for black. Uh, generally, um, the, uh, you know, the, um, black, uh, strength here, uh, tends to basically be, um, in, you know, basically, uh, taking this to the middle game tends to be stronger for black. Um, with the, uh, uh, you know, basically with the uh, uh, Scandinavian, um, you know, uh, the eval is generally much worse, actually, for black than this. Um, plus 0.43, not really that bad, not really that different from equality. Uh, and, you know, considering that with the Scandinavian, you're getting some level of practical compensation anyways, um, I basically like black's uh, position here. Um, so castles, uh, castles queenside, b4, uh, and then either f5 or knight f6 or bishop takes f3, um, but basically really very close to equality. Um, I don't know if knight takes b4 can be played. That looks like a pretty dangerous tactical possibility, um, but it is it is in this opening book. Uh, so I guess I'm sort of going to look at the opening book. Uh, sometimes in the Scandinavian, the um, uh, the lines aren't particularly helpful. Uh, it doesn't really help that much to um to evaluate the computer lines in the opening because they're always very favorable to white um the fact that this one is not extremely favorable to white uh sort of implies that uh that white is is you know getting kind of a mediocre position um this uh you know this um knight c3 uh does not really or you know this initial knight f3 unchallenging to the queen um doesn't really advance white's position in any way uh it's just sort of yeah i mean i don't know um uh not that not that great an idea um and uh and it'll definitely lose you know it basically you know it'll it'll end up um losing a lot of time to uh to um black uh who's gonna play this you know much more aggressively and what with uh, much um better uh straightforward development um anyways b4 knight takes b4 rook b1 and then e6, uh, you know, knight c6 was the book move here, but e6 looks fine to me. I don't see any problems there. Um, and, uh, you know, now it's sort of an interesting kind of asymmetrical position. Um, this b1 uh, rook has uh, some attacking chances uh, for white, um, but black has better development and, and it looks like he's going to start launching an attack on the white uh, king side. Um, it's interesting. Anyways, nothing too exciting there. Um, knight f3, bishop g4, bishop e2. And, uh, yeah, now white's, uh, you know, th this this should, you know, I, I think in a, as a general trend, um, these positions overestimate how strong, uh, you know, white is in the Scandinavian. Um, so 0.6 is, is really, you know, having played the Scandinavian, I just know that 0.6 is not as solid for white as it might um, appear uh, in other, or might be consistent with in other positions. Um, uh, it's just not, you know, partially because black doesn't get his central pawns out, uh, early. Um, it just, uh, ends up being a more favorable, um, uh, you know, eval for white than, than I think it end, often ends up being. Uh, you know, you can do an analysis of the Scandinavian, um, and it'll just slowly go from white's big advantage to something much more towards equality, um, playing just totally normal moves. Anyways, castles, castles, uh, b4, knight takes b4. Knight takes b4 is uh, kind of aggressive. I mean, opening the b-file for the rook probably isn't the best idea, but it is within the opening book. And uh, and here, you know, black, I think, is, is just fine. Um, an alternative here, uh, this line, bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, knight d4, 
A4, E6. Yeah, everything's fine. I mean, you know, it's basically, um, uh, you know, this this is a an early uh, queenside attack for white. Um, but uh, with straightforward development and potentially bishop takes b4, a5, um, black's got a pretty good uh, a pretty good position. Um, cool. So let's keep going. Um, knight f3, bishop g4. Uh, but no challenges to the queen until this knight c3. Um, queen d7 is interesting. It's just not what I would look at. Uh, I would play queen d6 here. Um, queen d6 is a little bit worse because, uh, um, you know, basically it doesn't have c6 played behind it. Uh, frequently, you know, basically in the Scandinavian, the e4, d5, pawn takes, queen takes, um, bishop g4, bishop e2, uh, and then, or sorry, uh, going back in this line, queen, uh, queen takes d5, knight c3, queen d6, and then c6. Um, here, black's basically in an okay place. Uh, white is not, you know, worse, uh, worse here. The only move that, um, black can really do, uh, with, uh, you know, the only, uh, threat that white can really make immediately is, uh, is knight to b5, and this is sort of a misplacement. Um, what ends up happening here generally is something like knight to f3 and then c6, uh, defending against b5, uh, and basically black's just fine. Uh, no problems for black here. Uh, this, this is an, a good opening that, uh, you know, I can think of at least a few grandmasters have tried in practice. Um, anyways, uh, let's go back to the game. Um, uh, black castles queenside very early, which is unusual. Um, and then b4 is played early, uh, you know, partially just to start an attack on the, um, the black queenside. Anyways, uh, nothing really here. Uh, tactical defense, I guess. Um, uh, knight e8 is a blunder. Um, let's figure out why. Uh, after knight e8, knight e5, it's definitely a good outpost, but it was a good outpost either way, so the preferred move here was bishop to d6, preventing that knight to e5 outpost. Uh, it's kind of impressive. Is that really f five whole points on the idea that, uh, that that knight is going to be outposted there? Um, eh, all right. Um, anyways, bishop to e5 and then rook to c1. Uh, interesting. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, so e4, d5, queen takes, and just basically, um, uh, you know. Where 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 was uh, Black's best opportunity here? Um, knight to c6, knight to e4, f5, knight g3. This looks fine for White. Uh, and uh, and then Black's better, I guess. Um, Bishop takes b7 was not really the best idea. Uh, this uh, this defensive battery for Black, uh, knight a5 and knight to b7. Um, holds up excellently. Uh, this really, you know, this is no, you know, this basically is no problem at all for black. Uh, there's, you know, um, you know, it basically, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that black chose to, uh, to let this, um, hey, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for uh, following, Angel. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so knight d6, uh, knight takes b, or bishop takes b7, knight takes b7. Things are fine. Uh, no problems here. Uh, you know, basically this, this was kind of a squandered opportunity for white, uh, you know, leading to equality out of a plus seven eval, uh, was silly, not a good idea. Um, and here, you know, I, I don't know, I, I guess there's not really much, uh, you know, not much white can do. What, what was the better, let's take a look at what the better method for white to break in here was. Um, knight takes, knight takes, knight c3, uh... Which is fine, uh, knight c or knight c six here. Sorry, um, knight takes queen b seven. Yeah, everything's fine. Um, I think black is just uh, yeah. Black black just seems to be stronger. I, I don't think there's a way to break in uh, with this method. Um, let's take a look from here. Here, I think white really makes a serious misstep. So I'm kind of curious to see what the engine comes up with in terms of analysis. Uh, knight c4 looks very challenging immediately. Uh, this a5 knight is holding the b7 pawn down. 
So I'm thinking like knight takes. Uh, it's this is I mean this is actually really tricky. Um, maybe knight to d6. No, well I mean it's actually really just bad for black. Uh, you know it's it's plus five for white and uh, and looks like it. Um, how do you hold uh, how do you hold b7 here? Uh, it's not super clear to me. Um, queen e7, bishop a6, knight d6, looks fine. But knight c4 challenging this uh, this um, a5 knight, I think, is a much better play. Uh, knight takes c4 and then c6, maybe. Um, but overall, I think it's pretty good for, uh, for um, black. Anyways, uh, interesting. Um, let's just go through this game. Uh, it's a very tactical game, which I don't particularly like spending a ton of time on on the streams. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, overall it looks pretty good for black uh, out of what was very good for white. Um, too much tactical play to be, you know, a lot of tactical play to be honest. Um, in terms of sidestepping a lot of this stuff, I'm just going to go back to where the opening breaks were. Um, Castle and Queenside introduced a lot of potential issues. I think Castle and Queenside in general is probably fine. Uh, in fact, uh, the engine is evaluating it as best. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not a huge fan of, uh, of Castle and Queenside here. Um, I think after Bishop G6 or E6, uh, Black's in a pretty good, you, you know, basically Black's in a pretty good place. Castle and Kingside seems much more intuitive, and it leads to a lot less problems with these kinds of aggressive attacks. Um... You know, that said, it is uh, one of the, the opening lines. Uh, let's just look. It's the second most popular opening line uh, relatively deep in, so I don't know. That's a small sample size. But I play like e6, knight f6, bishop d6, um, and just, uh, you know, don't yeah, don't worry about any of this stuff. Um, it's uh, knight f6, e6, bishop d6, castle kingside. Um, and then you don't have to deal with any of this, uh, you know, any of this, you know, uh, weak... Uh, you know, relatively uh, weakening uh, uh, pawn moves, uh, attacks with uh, with pawns on, um, uh, you know, attacks with pawns on the uh, black queen side. Um, black is fine. Knight f6, d3, castles, bishop f4, e6, and uh, I think yeah, overall here, uh, you know, black is black is fine. Uh, I think the eval is at about um, you know 0.5. But, uh, but overall, you know, I don't really see too many problems with this position. Um, I'd prefer to be castled, um, uh, I'd prefer to be castled, uh, kingside, but overall here this looks just fine. No issues. Um, okay. Castles, b b4, knight takes, rook b1, and, uh, yeah, overall here, you know, relative equality. Um, things really start to go wrong for black uh, when this attack uh, starts coming in. Um, there's a huge difference between bishop d6 and knight to e8 here. Um, you know, it's for tactical reasons, so I guess we can play through them. Um, but, uh, but generally here, um, bishop to d6 is better. Uh, I don't know. I mean, this is, this is a big positional weakness. Allowing knight to e5... Uh, is really difficult uh, in terms of making, um, you know, issue. It basically, it's really difficult in terms of finding things for black to do after knight to e5. Uh, so, knight e8 instead, knight to d5, queen e7, bishop a6. And uh, overall here, now, now things are fine. Um, you know, how could white have done this better? Uh, c4 uh, was considered to be better than bishop to um, a6. Uh, I think just sort of a slow pressing attack of white on the um, the white queen side is probably the best idea. Um, c4, c5, c6 uh, looks fine, um, and uh, and let's you know keep going. Uh, knight takes, knight c3. Overall here, I think it looks pretty solid. Um, just really really tactically complicated. Uh, the position I'm just interested in looking at is what was better for white. Uh, you know, what, what makes this a plus nine position? Uh, and I really hope that it's something relatively clear, because, uh, um, uh, you know, with a plus nine eval, it really should be. Um, king b8, queen takes a5, b6. 
I mean, this is this is a long tactical string of moves. Uh, you know, a human would have much more trouble uh, getting this right than the computer does. Uh, okay, I, I sort of see we're starting to get into the situation where there's going to be some mating threats on the king, but... I don't know. I mean, I feel like this is sort of getting biased by Black's extremely limited mobility. Um, I think in terms of practical compensation, uh, Black is basically... Um, uh, you know, Black's basically going to be fine. Uh, you know, Black is has a much better chance of being fine than the engine is evaluating. Uh, knight to c6, knight takes, queen takes b7. And, uh, yeah, uh, nothing there. Uh, just, you know, basically a slightly better position for Black. Uh, and, uh, I don't know. Looks fine. Knight takes, maybe. Um, king, yeah, uh, knight e3 looks like it simplifies, um, yeah, let's look at what happened here. This is another tactical, uh, tactical, uh, complexity. Um, rook to d8 basically, uh, holds this file. Um, rook takes d8, knight takes d8, things are fine, um, and, uh, on the other side, uh, king f5 leads to knight e3, king g6, and then knight takes f7, king takes f7. Um, here black is better. So overall, good, good stuff. Um, rook d7, knight e7, and, uh, and overall, I don't know, I guess not a lot, not a lot there. Um, Rook c8, maybe. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, cool. Yeah, so it's so a very tactically complicated position. A lot of volatility. Let's just look at this game. A lot, a lot of volatility in a really complicated position. Um, in terms of improving this game for black, uh, you know, first I'd point towards tactical play. Um, I can improve White's game a lot better. Uh, knight f3 doesn't make much sense in the um, uh, the Sicilian. Um, uh, no, no, I'm actually just going to um, uh, configure one this week. Uh, thank you for asking, Leaf. Uh, I, uh, my goal is to basically make it so all of the um, lessons are automatically uploaded to um, the... Uh, uh, are automatically uploaded to um, uh, a YouTube channel. But, uh, but yeah, nothing... Uh, uh, nothing at this point. Um, hoping to uh, to get that all configured this week, and then once uh, once these lessons can go up forever, uh, that's um, you know that's going to be way better. Uh, 14 days is not my goal. My goal here is unlimited free chess content for everyone, free instructional content so everyone can access it, uh, and uh, and um, having a YouTube channel uh, that where the videos are up uh, indefinitely. Um, is much better than uh, having a um, uh, you know a Twitch channel where the videos are only available for 14 days. Um, I'm hoping this instruction is helpful to everyone, not just the people who are um, uh, looking at the games, but um, uh, you know basically I, I want everything up forever and I want coaching to be completely uh, completely free. Uh, it's, it's really my goal. Anyways, uh, nothing particularly, um, you know, no, I guess I guess I would say there aren't huge improvements outside of just accuracy of tactical play. Um, uh, there's just a lot of weird moves in this opening. Uh, knight takes b4 is pretty aggressive, but it's in the opening book. Um, improvements for black, I guess I would say... Um, this was a little bit slow response to this queenside attack, maybe. Um, you know, h6 doesn't really do much. You know, this this bishop uh, threatening this pin is really pretty unimportant here. Um, I might start allocating resources to um, to uh, this uh, this queen to be you know basically queen to b3 attack on b7. Um, I guess oh one thing just from a strategic perspective. So um, I I'm not a fan of uh, of castling queenside in the Scandinavian. Um, largely because this type of thing can happen. Uh, so I guess my biggest takeaway from this game, uh, you know, other than just, you know, tactical studies extremely important and accurate tactics are, you know, the deciding factor in most club-level games. Um, I, uh, so, so, you know, that, um, 
uh, that is is pretty my my pretty much my biggest takeaway. Um, just basically, uh, you know, so such a high percentage of games are determined by tactical uh, you know play um, at the club level uh, that you should really be studying tactics an hour a day uh, if you're hoping to improve. Like an hour a day for a month uh, would would work well. Um, so so that that's really the biggest decider of this particular game. Um, when you see a game report that's this volatile, uh, the answer is always tactics. Uh, game, re you know, game reports like this mean a very tactical game with some inaccuracy. Uh, yeah, Jack Mac, exactly. Tactics. Bam. Um, I love the emote, uh, and that emote is very relevant in this case. Um, so, uh, that I think is pretty good, um, that, bishop takes, uh, that bishop takes e5 idea. Um, and, uh, uh, but the improvement that I would make for black here, uh, other, other than, uh, you know, really study tactics so you can play more accurately than your opponent in a tactically complicated situation. Um, the only advice I would give is consider a line of the Scandinavian where, um, you aren't castling queenside. If you're castling kingside, you know, these threats really can't happen. Uh, you know, basically white is castled kingside, so he's sort of free to move like a4, b4, and aggressively attack on the queen side. Um, and if you're over there, then he can, you know, throw uh, the whole thing at you uh, and, uh, and basically uh, aim for a win over there. If you castle kingside, um, his uh, attacking moves are going to have to be a lot more double-edged. Uh, you can't really pawn storm without hurting your own king safety. Um, so, you know, when I played the Scandinavian, I always castled kingside. Um, my finding was that that was almost always better. Um, but that is the improvement that I would offer in this case. Uh, knight f6, uh, e6, and uh, bishop to d6. Um, the engine evaluates castling queenside is fine. So, you know, I, I, I guess I don't want to... I mean, you know, it's, it's playable. It, or it's, a, you know, it's, it's in the engine as, as a good move. Um, but I think just for um, practical considerations, uh, you'll avoid a lot of these really dangerous queenside attacks if you castle kingside. Um, that's, why I would, uh, that's why I would propose that you do that. Um, but anyways, uh, that's uh, that's my suggestion. Uh, you know, uh, try to make it so that you castle uh, a little later and on the king side in the Scandinavian, and uh, and I think you'll be in pretty good shape. Um, anyways, that's uh, that's that, and uh, on to the next thing. Um, thank you very much for sending the game, uh, and uh, yeah, thank you very much for sending the game, Myriad. I think we have another one from you uh, in the relatively near future. Please send more. Um, my main advice uh, coming out of that game is the tactics are extremely important. Uh, I always say that, um, but uh, I um, I also think uh, here um, consider a Scandinavian line where you're castling kingside instead of queenside. Uh, I think that's better for you. Anyways, um, that's uh, that's my um, that's my take on that game. Uh, it became very tactical and, and tactical. You know, I, I can't really teach tactical accuracy. Uh, that's just homework that you have to do uh, on your own. Um, anyways, next one, Kathleen playing as white. Uh, thank you very much for sending this game, Kathleen. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's look. Um, here we go. Um, Kathleen is playing white here against the French. Uh, I haven't seen this game, and I'm just going to play through it quickly. Um, okay. Okay. Okay, cool. Good, uh, good, good save. Uh, good work. Um, yeah, nice job. Uh, nice job drawing this one, Kathleen. Uh, yeah. So, um, I'm gonna start off with something that I think is like pretty important. Um, you know, the main theory of the French is if white can hold on to this d4 and e5 pawn, then white is better. Um, if white can maintain those two, uh, you know, two pawns, um, black will play many moves like f6 or c5, trying to undermine them. Um, but, uh, but if, uh, black is unsuccessful, then, um, there's basically, you know, there, basically white will win, uh, if he can maintain d4 and e5. Uh, many of black's moves in the French are to try to disrupt these two pawns. Um, if black can basically clear off one or two of the pawns, he's either going to be equal or better. Uh, so you basically never want to do anything as white to disrupt this d4, e5 pawn structure. Uh, so, you know, even if this pawn appears to be hanging, um, this, uh, this is bad from a theoretical perspective. Uh, you know, there's, there's just very few lines where it's correct to play d take c5. 
Um, because because uh, from a fundamental standpoint, the French is based on white being able to retain this d4, e5 pawns. Um, by playing d takes c5, uh, you're sort of doomed to equality here. Uh, so yeah, um, you know, other moves here. Uh, knight a3 is surprisingly playable here. It's the number one move. Bishop to d3, um, a3. It's really your choice. Um, but, you know, uh, as, you know, there's a great draw up in, uh, in ideas behind the chess openings by Fine. Um, on this topic, uh, and uh, and it basically has to do with uh, various pawn structures in the um, uh, in the French defense. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, anyways, uh, knight f3, knight e7, uh, but pawn takes c5 is uh, is not accurate. Um, so I, I wouldn't play that. Uh, the king looks like it's moving a little bit inefficiently here. Um, I'm sort of wondering, basically, d takes c5 is, I you normally just view as a really kind of, um, you know, uh, rough move for French, the white in the French. Um, but I think you can hold this e5 pawn, and I think uh, I think everything's pretty much good here. Um, king e7. And, uh, yeah. f5, maybe, f5, uh... Pawn takes f5, pawn takes f5, maybe. Um, but uh, basically, white is good. Uh, there's not really much, uh, you know, much going on here. Um, I, I'm looking at this position. You know, by the time uh, by the time um, g4 gets played, uh, there's some real issues for white. But let's take a look. Um, knight g6, and then g5 or f5 potentially. Rook f1 holds this pawn, um, and uh, moves like f5 I think are good for white. Uh, maybe knight e7, f5, something. Um, but it, the position's really shifted towards uh, towards black. Um, the engine here is proposing uh, rook e c8. Um, rook e c8 uh, attacks this knight. Um, the knight is pinned, uh, and on the knight moving, uh, so here, like you know, say rook, uh, you know, basically here the engine just gives up the c3 pawn entirely. But let's say the knight moves, so the knight plays to e2. Um, uh, black can play g5, but I was thinking more about black playing um, d5 here. Uh, this looks, or d4 here, uh, this looks like it puts a lot of pressure on this rook on c1, um, but I don't know, uh, interesting. Let's go back. Uh, okay. So this opening's going fine, d takes c5 is just a positional mistake. Um, you know, there may be opening books that recommend it, but I don't think that it's, uh, it's thematically appropriate for the French. Uh, d takes c5 is not that good an idea. Um, bishop e3, queen takes e3, bishop b5. Uh, everything's, uh, you know, here everything's looking okay for white, but white's center is still diminished. Uh, I, I don't really like the general, you know, I don't like the general idea. Uh, e5 could probably be undermined. Moves like f6, uh, pawn takes f6 could, uh, could eliminate that pawn, uh, or basically eliminate white's center entirely. Um, you know, you'd have to set it up for a move or two first, but uh, but castles f6, castles bishop d7 f6, and uh, and black is just fine. Um, black I think loses some tempo here, bouncing that king around. I don't uh, think that was super helpful. Um, if you teach, should probably just play king e7 immediately. Um, but in terms of improving, uh, king f8, b4. Yeah, I think it's pretty much, I mean, I think knight takes c6 was an understandable error. Uh, knight takes c6, rook takes c6, uh, leads to an open file. Um, but I do understand your goal of, uh, of trading off the, um, uh, the worse minor piece for the better minor piece here. Uh, that makes sense to me. I'm thinking something along the lines of like f5 could be good. Um, but overall, uh, I think, you know, white, white is basically fine. Um, the engine's proposing a, a kingside attack, g4, uh, followed by f5, and then probably king h1, rook g1, and pressure uh, with the pawns on the king side. Um, I like that. Uh, yeah, no, thank you very much, uh, Leaf. Um, I got my water right here. Uh, thanks. 
Um, thank you for saying that. Uh, rem good reminder. Um, so yeah, G4, F5 looks uh, looks pretty good. Um, and uh, yeah, overall, um, Knight takes C6 I think was pretty weak. Uh, it was the kind of a, um, you know, it, it makes sense as an intuitive idea, um, but uh, this bishop's not particularly doing that much on that diagonal, um, whereas this knight is actually holding a good amount of rele uh, relevant squares. Um, f5 uh, probably is the best play for white, um, but, uh, but g4, uh, you know, g4, f5, pawn takes f5 uh, provides a more complete attack. Uh, I think this is good. Um, so yeah, let's just go through it. Um, king f8, uh, you know, kind of basically, you know, these moves, king f8 followed by king e7 doesn't make much sense. Um, and then white can sort of seize the initiative by launching an early kingside attack. Uh, basically the plan here is to, uh, launch a kingside attack. Um, that's, uh, that's my suggestion here, and I think, uh, I think the way that, um, white improves this game. Uh, D takes e C5, I'm going to continue to kind of harp on his anti-thematic in the French. Um, and, uh, and here, you know, there's not really much, uh, you know, there's not much for, uh, you know, white to worry about. Um, I think it just comes down to, uh, to making, um, this attack with F4, F5, and, uh, pawn threats on, um, E6. Uh, yeah, I think white can just sort of safely push the pawns here. Um, once this sort of be turns into a queenside thing, and, and once this, uh, I think this, you know, just in the abstract, trading this knight on d4 for the c6 bishop is probably not a wise idea. Um, but if you do it, uh, you know, basically if you, if you um, don't diminish white's center here and just start attacking the king side, I think that's going to be the best, uh, best course of action for you. Um, even a3 is just kind of a, a slightly unnecessary move. Um, g4, f5, pawn takes f5, king h1, uh, rook to g1, and you're in a good place. Um, so that's what I would uh, that's what I would vote for here. Uh, you know, f5, pawn takes f5, and uh, and nothing. Um, so cool, interesting. Um, so yeah, too many uh, too many moves uh, spent on uh, this um, uh, you know on this queen side here. Uh, B4, I can sort of get my head around as a move. Um, you know, probably uh, you know it's probably already better to start attack. You know, the engine evaluates it; it's already better to start attacking on the king side. Um, but uh, but looking at this position, um, even though it is double edged, there's few enough pieces that black can really exploit you attacking on the king side. Um, this leads me to believe that uh, the attacking on the king side is really uh, the wisest move. Um, overall, uh, very interesting. E4, E6, and uh, pawn takes C5 being uh, kind of the only anti-thematic move. Um, you know, white's basically fine after all these exchanges. And then, uh, you know, the engine is encouraging you, and I'm encouraging you. Uh, keep the pieces on the board. Uh, launch an attack. Um, and uh, I don't think black can really successfully respond to this, um, to this pawn storm. Uh, G4, F5, pawn takes F5, uh, and puts uh, white in a pretty good, uh, good place, uh, and black in a pretty dangerous one. Um, so, anyways, uh, very interesting. Um, yeah, thank you, uh, thank you very much, uh, Leaf. Uh, I hope it's helpful. Um, you know, mainly the goal here is just uh, the the goal is really to just make um, chess instruction completely free. Uh, it will be free. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, I hope that, uh, that someone, will, uh, stronger than me will be giving free lessons in the same way that I am now. Um, uh, but it's going to happen. So, um, so I'm really excited that, uh, that I get to work on this early and I'm really excited that you're here watching this early. Um, and, uh, you know, together we can, uh, basically make it so that, uh, the chess lessons are free and available to everyone worldwide. Uh, that's, that's the goal. Um, I'm, you know, not saying that that's, um, you know, something that I'll do successfully, but it's someone that some, it's something that someone will do successfully. Um, and my hope is that I can help contribute to that larger project. Um, uh, it really can be done. Uh, and, uh, and that, um, and that makes me really happy. Uh, so anyways, um, start attacking hard on the king side here. Uh, and, uh, and white will, uh, secure a better position. Um, uh, I would just slow down on the fundamentals but behind exchanging this knight for this bishop uh yes i understand that it's a um you know the worse uh you know knight is um weaker than the bishop is a minor piece um but uh 
yeah, um, I, I think, you know, this knight could potentially be useful for an attack. Um, but more than that, I just think that in terms of comparing the values of these two pieces, this knight is outposted in a very useful way. This bishop is outposted in a, in a pretty unuseful way. Um, so exchanging this uh, this knight for this, um, uh, you know, exchanging this this knight for this bishop uh, is uh, is not really the best use of it. Uh, it's better to uh, to save this knight for a um, kingside attack started by uh, by f4 f5, um, pawn takes f5, and uh, and I think everything's good. Anyways, uh, the game continues, and uh, you know, new, uh, basically empties a lot. Uh, you know, basically f5 ends up. Um, being played, and uh, ultimately, um, yeah, nothing, uh, you know, n nothing really too complicated. Black is uh, winning and up material. Um, I don't want to spend a ton of time on this end game. Um, you have a great tactic at the end. I just want to show that off for a second because I think it really was a strong idea. Um, it was uh, uh, king to G, so so um, uh, rook takes h5 here, and then with king to g6, so basically the eval is a minus 4, um, and then with rook takes h5 here, it goes to equals. Uh, king to g6 draws. Uh, I think rook to g5 was best, but still here, king takes, and I'm pretty sure this is a draw. Yeah, it's a draw. Um, king takes h6, um, and if the rook goes anywhere else, then you play rook takes, uh, you r play rook takes f5. Um, and then this was the the cool tactical closing. Uh, rook takes uh, f4, king takes f4, king takes king f3, and uh, and everything's cleared off, uh, and it's a draw. Um, so yeah, overall good, good draw for uh, white, and uh, nicely done. Um, thank you very much for uh, for the game. Um, let's uh, let's take a look at one more. Uh, so this is a till Daniel Noah's game. Uh, I hope you're around uh, for this. Uh, we rescheduled it from a morning game to an evening game. Um, and uh, we're doing it now. Uh, if you're not here, uh, it'll be a video on demand, and I'll remind you in the Discord. Um, so here, uh, cool, awesome, yeah, thanks, Jack Mac. Uh, yeah, sorry, sometimes I forget people's uh, I forget people's tw uh, Twitch names versus their um, uh, versus their uh, uh, their Twitch names versus their um, Discord names. But cool, let's go through this. Um, so Vienna game, interesting. Um, uh, cool. Um, so here, uh, we, we keep doing this, uh, and uh, it's one of those things that we figured out relatively early on in this stream. Um, this, uh, this F4, uh, you know, is the Falk Beer Gambit. And we've established that there's only one move that's good against the Falk Beer Gambit, and they often don't play it. Um, yeah, no worries. No, no, no worries, Kathleen. I hope that was helpful. Um, your game was really interesting, Kathleen. Uh, I think basically it was, um, uh, you know, uh, with Kathleen, it was basically, or uh, with Kathleen's game, it was basically, um, I, I thought that the D-take C5 pawn was um, uh, generally anti-thematic in French opening games. Uh, it's, it's rare that you can play D-take C5 and not have that um, op uh, basically neutralize your center and have it not lead to equality. Um, and then the other part of that game... Um, uh, you know, ba basically, I, I thought that was sort of anti-thematic, and then, um, uh, yeah, and then there was there was definitely some middle game volatility with uh, with uh, tactics. Um, anyways, uh, f4 pawn takes f4 is not the solution. The correct solution to f4 is d5. Um, d5 pawn takes e5, knight takes e4, knight f3. Uh, this uh, this is good for white and uh, and generally good um so here white is an you know basically uh uh sorry so f4 d5 or, or basically f4 so so this is the situation i was just going through the um the the correct ga gambit uh d5 is the only playable move against the fock beer gambit we've looked through this a number of times uh and it's in, it's one of my takeaways from that position um with that uh white is showing a slight minus um, but it's basically equal. Uh, F takes e5, knight takes e4, uh, and then either knight f3 or queen f3, or there's a few options for white. Um, but basically, this plays out as a relatively normal game, and uh, and there's not really too many issues for uh, for white. It's a little bit worse, um, but uh, but this is black's best uh, response. Every other response to the Falk beer gambit, other than d5, leads to a um, pretty solid minus. Uh, takes f4 is an inaccuracy. I mean, it basically gives white a one-pawn advantage out of the opening. Um, solid. 
So if the gambit is accepted, that's almost guaranteed bad for black. Um, uh, let's keep going on this game. e5 is correct, knight g8 is correct, knight f3 is correct, d6 is correct, d4. Um, and then bishop g4 is the first move that isn't the main line here. Uh, here, knight c6 is the main line. Um, something like uh, d5 probably gets played. Bishop takes f4, gets back the pawn, okay. Um, and here, you know, it's basically traded into a situation where white, uh, white certainly has the initiative. Um, yeah, no, totally, Jack. Uh, but, but honestly, in this opening, um, we've looked at it a good number of times. Um, everything is bad for black except for d5, and black often doesn't play d5 here. Uh, you know, frequently it's not d5. Um, you know, this, this uh, uh, book has black playing d5 90% of the time, but it seems like in practice, like, it seems like black plays d5 like 50% of the time. Um, you know, often not playing it. Uh, so f4 here, d5, f takes e5, knight takes e4, knight f3, and, uh, and basically um, white's in good shape. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe. But it does make sense for you to keep playing it where you are. Um, no problems there. Um, uh, so here, you know, white's better. Uh, pretty much, you know, just straightforward development here, and white, uh, white will get a good position. Um, D4, uh, bishop G4 is inaccurate, but not terrible. Um, just, uh, just keep developing as white, and uh, you've got a big spatial advantage. Black has no center, by the way. Uh, no pawns on either the E file or the D file, uh, and uh, and you're in a good place. Queen takes, king, knight takes, C3, and uh, yeah, um, I think white's just uh, white's just solid. Um, you can keep playing through this, but uh, yeah, okay. So bishop takes C7. Um, I don't think was the right move. Um, Everything else here I've liked. Uh, I think basically you've developed in a normal way, and if you continue to develop in a normal way, castles, queenside, rook f1, you know, um, maybe maybe castles, kingside, just because it defends, uh, you know, this uh, this knight. Um, you know, it does sort of suck that you have to give back the b7 pawn, but um, but that's fine too. Uh, I guess I would say castles here, and uh, and your knight's not, you know, b bishop takes knight is not going to be that great. It's not going to double the pawns. Um, if that's played, but I don't think you can hold on to the b7 pawn here, um, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, no, so bishop takes c7, I think, was the, um, the issue. Uh, bishop takes c7 and blacks up, uh, blacks up significantly. Um, just a full piece. Oh, this is wild. Okay, so then bishop takes f4 is played, uh, for pretty much, and pretty much favors white. And then you en you end up winning, um, but uh, but let's go back here a little bit. Uh, e4, e5, and then uh, and then you're already good after pawn takes f4. Just develop normally, and everything will be fine in this opening. Um, the pawn on b7 can't be um, you know can't be saved. So castle queen side or castle king side, um, and you're you're good. Um, And then, uh, and then black hangs this piece back, um, and then, uh, and then you should be able to, you should be able to, uh, to draw all this. And uh, now I think you're all right. Um, yeah, uh, interesting, Jack. Uh, interesting game. Um, uh, very tactical. Uh, so, um, so yeah. So you know, at the end of the day, I, I lead everyone to tactics because I know that's one thing that uh, that you know I really can't teach. Uh, that's just something you have to do all the tactical puzzles. Um, you have to put the time in there, and uh, and once you do, um, you really will be in good shape. Uh, there are many points in this game where there where there was volatility. Uh, you know, there's multiple swings of more than five points, um, and the main point of tactics is so that you can capitalize on those. Um, once you do your tactics training, uh, you know, start with a, an hour a day for a month, um, and then you know, keep working from there. Uh, you know, you'll be able to see a lot more of these opportunities. Um, you know, swings of five points uh, should end the game. Uh, and uh, with good tactical vision, they will end the game. Um, so that's my main takeaway here. I, you know, I'm just going to steer you to the same resources that uh, that everyone uh, is talking about. Basically, this um, uh, you know, uh, Chess.com Puzzle Battle, Chess.com Puzzle Rush, um, and uh, basically um, you know, good uh, good uh, tactical resources so that you can learn quickly. Um,
you know, you, you've got an elite out of this opening. Um, I wouldn't t talk you out of this opening, especially if you're getting uh, moves other than d5 against it. The refutation is d5. Everything else is good for white. Uh, we've, we've looked at this before, and, uh, and it continues to be true. Um, so, you know, when you're walking out of the opening with two points, I have no complaints. Um, I just think it's really about tactics. Uh, bishop takes c7 reflects something. Um, uh, but um, I, I think, you know, I think it's definitely a move worth avoiding. Uh, just hung a piece. Um, I think with sufficient tactical training, you won't be hanging pieces to one-move combinations anymore. Uh, you'll see them a lot better. Um, but that's really where this game was decided. Um, I think the opening is fine. You can stick with it. Um, you can definitely stick with it as long as people aren't playing d5 against it. And, uh, and overall, uh, you're in a good place. Um, do, you know, you know you have a very clear and straightforward path forward. Um, just, uh, just continue to play um, the best tactical moves uh, and do sufficient tactical training so that you can, um, you, you know, you can um, win against opponents uh, who are playing inferior tactical moves. Uh, not super complicated, to be honest. Um, just, uh, just a lot of time uh, uh, you know, spent on that. Um, cool. Yeah, no, 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 it's interesting. Um, uh, well, no, I mean, I think as long as you, um, as long as you continue to push on that, uh, uh, you know, Jack, it's as long as you can basically make it so that your, um, uh, that your situation is, um, you know, one where your opponent is, is making volatile moves, uh, tactical study is going to put you ahead in those, uh, those types of positions. Um, strongly agree with that, uh, that general concept. Um, for Puzzle Rush, uh, I um I guess you know to be honest Kathleen when I was doing Puzzle Rush, uh, I um I I think only five minute was available. I don't even think three month minute um uh, Puzzle Rush was available. Um, so I guess what I would say about Puzzle Rush is um, if you just uh, play um uh, if you you know it doesn't really matter to be honest three minute or five minute. Five minute probably takes you to the point where you, um, uh, you know, where you are seeing more complicated tactics because you can get more in in five minutes. Um, but uh, this, um, uh, yeah, no, no. But um, but basically, uh, chess.com puzzle rush. I've done a lot less of recently. Uh, when I was doing it, it was the only f the five minute option. Um, it's much more important that you actually just spend the time doing it, Kathleen, than. Um, uh, you know, than than specifically what you do. Uh, you know, you want to be at the point where you're seeing thousands, uh, you know, thousands of tactics. Uh, it's it's really about volume, and uh, you know, go back and, and do the ones uh, uh, you know that you miss so that the correct position imprints. Um, but uh, but definitely be sure um, to uh, to spend sufficient time on uh, on tactics. Um, I think you know prior to or you know below two thousand. Um, uh, you know, below a 2,000 rating, tactics are um, by far, you know, the most valuable thing. Most games under 2,000 are decided by tactical strength. Uh, yeah, no problem. No, no, I think three. I think three minutes is fine. Uh, really, just uh, just spend a lot of time on it. Um, you know, probably the quicker, the the easier the puzzles. Um, you know, probably the more they're helpful at making you. Um, careful and the more uh, you know and versus basically the more that they'll make you calculate so like if you're doing more tactic you know if you're doing 1500 rated tactical puzzles um, you know those are mostly one or two move tactics um, those are super good so that you get more careful and that you don't accidentally miss one or two move tactics in a game um, in five move in a five minute game uh, or like five minute puzzle rush and when you're doing like 2100 level tactics um, those were, you know, uh, mates in three, wins in three, you know, positional improvements. Um, those are those are way more subtle. Uh, so those are good for calculating and for longer games. Um, but both are skills that I think are super helpful to have and super helpful to have as much of as you possibly can. Uh, both the the um, you know the tactics where you have to be careful and the tactics where you have to calculate. Um, and the more the higher level tactics are better for calculation. The shorter ones are better for just attention. Um, but both are skills that you want to have, particularly at fast time controls. Uh, so that's sort of my advice on that. Um, this, uh, yeah, uh, and, and I think Jack's position is also pretty similar to that. It's, it's really just about tactics until you get to about 2000. Um, you know, you will have to go back at 2000 and, uh, uh, you know, uh, get a better um, uh, understanding of the position. 
nah, you know, it's really about, um, uh, you know, with opening theory, I think it's, it's really about when people have suggested it. Um, someone gave me six openings to look at, uh, like the idea. I gave them six slots, one in the morning and one in the evening for three consecutive days. Um, and if anyone else has any more recommendations on openings that they'd like to see, uh, I, I would really like to see them. Um, I think it's really helpful for my uh, opening understanding. Um, so it's up for you, or you know, it's up to you. Uh, it's um, you know, basically, uh, you know, that's that's basically the idea uh, that I have. Um, you know, I think I think basically, um, you know, having an opening theory section uh, as opposed to a game review section uh, could be helpful to the stream. Um, and, uh, and overall, uh, just, um, yeah, just keep sending material. Doesn't have to be games, could be opening theory, could be end game theory. Um, and, uh, and I learn a lot from it too, to be honest. So, um, so whatever you want to send, uh, is, uh, is very helpful for the stream. Um, yeah, so I, I don't have any organized way of doing it. Uh, you know, I just give slots as they're available, Leaf. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, interesting question. Um, feel free to just send me whatever you want, and uh, and I'll put it uh, at you know a time that uh, that is available. Um, thank you very much for asking, Leaf. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, you know, in terms of better reviews, I guess I would say um, you know uh, things that are yes, I yeah, I would say that's probably true, Jack. Uh, the less tactical ones, I have the more ability to add value to. Uh, you know, the issue with tactical games is I'm happy to go over them, and they show some cool stuff sometimes. Um, but, you know, the thing about tactical games is basically that um, grandmasters are, are worse than the computer at them. Uh, the computer has basically solved tactics. So as important as they are for you to learn, uh, they're not really that important from a theoretical perspective uh, in terms of analysis, just because the engine can do all the tactics. Uh, you know, no, no human can improve uh, on what, you know, even the really basic engines like the chess.com engine can do. Uh, the chess.com engine beats every single human on earth at tactics. So in terms of reviewing a game, like, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not sure I can add that much. Uh, you know, for a tactical game, you know, you can go through and look at uh, with an engine. And I think that will do, you know, 95% of what uh, I can do in terms of teaching. Uh, you know, the, the uh, situations that I think I can add the most value are the ones that are focused on opening positions, uh, where I can kind of point towards openings that I've seen. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, more tactics in general. I, you know, I, I think in terms of improvement, tactics are by far the most important thing under a 2000 level. But in terms of analysis, um, I just can't add much there. Uh, the computer is better than every single person at tactics. Um, so, you know, basically in a tactical game, uh, you know, I can try to come up with better moves, but, you know, if I really want to come up with the best better moves, I just look at the engine line. Um, and that's something that you can do at home, and that's not really any value that I'm adding. Uh, what I can do in terms of, um, you know, teaching is basically, uh, you know, I can point towards strategies or, like, opening-type heuristics that are, the you know, basically better at, um, uh, you know, you, you know, basically th those are the areas where I can help to improve things. Um, tactics, uh, you know, I can say, yeah, this is better than that, but the engine could have said exactly the same thing. Uh, you know, basically, um, I, I can help less with calculation because the computer beats every single person with on calculation and help more with, um, with explanation. Uh, explanation is where a, a coach can add value. Just tactical positions, uh, you know, a human's relatively worthless relative to the engine. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I could definitely try that, Jack. Um, you know, sure. Uh, that's an interesting idea and not one that I've thought of. Uh, but yeah, um, the engine will solve the best move in every situation. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can look at the places where the engine, you know, sees a big change in, um, in its assessment, and you can find uh, the tactical mistake that, uh, that would have provided an improvement or an opportunity. Um, but the, the main point there is, uh, you know, just don't... Um, uh, just don't, you know, uh, send, send whatever you want. Don't, don't be afraid to send anything. Um, I'm always really happy to see whatever games people will send in. Um, you know, I, um, can look at the most instructive part of any game and every game has instructive aspects to it. Uh, you know, even if it's just learning, um, the Albin counter gambit, uh, every game is, you know, has ability, you know, to, uh, to teach. Uh, so, um, so d please send as many games as you can. It's really helpful and it pr improves my analysis when, uh, when there's lots of games and I can work ahead and do some prep. 
Um, but uh, but yeah, overall, don't be afraid to send anything. Uh, please send whatever you want, and uh, uh, that'll uh, that that's it's all appreciated by me. Uh, you could send anything, any game to me, and I would appreciate it because it's all uh, it's all helpful in contributing to the stream in some way. Um, yeah, but yeah. Anyways, tactical games in general, uh, I just I can't add as much value as uh, as an engine can, um, and I wouldn't want to pretend to. Um, so, anyways, yeah. Thank you very much uh, for sending uh, sending those games, Jack. And uh, yeah, really hope uh, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. I hope you guys all have a good night. Uh, my next stream is at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, and I uh, look forward to seeing you there. Um, thank you very much for all sending the games, and I uh, hope this was helpful. Um, have a good night, everyone. Uh, I'll see you later. Bye.